Hi, welcome to the Dr. J. Bridge Show. My name is Jim Sternberg. I'm the host, and this is my co-host, Vicki. So, Jim, what is this month's talk about? This month, we're very lucky. We have Michael Schaefer, who is going to be our bridge expert. Michael is the bridge professional at the Jewish Center, and he's going to be talking to us this month about uh, takeout doubles. Wow, I can't wait to hear about it. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so why do we lose at bridge? Sure, it's like golf. You lose more than you win, but everybody likes to do well. The guy who tells you that he doesn't care how he does, that he's just playing for fun, yeah, sure. 60 years ago, S.J. Simon wrote the best-selling book, Why You Lose at Bridge, which is still a bestseller today. And what's the answer? Well, you just have to look in the mirror. Players who continue to play poorly and won't admit to themselves are their own worst enemies. After all, bridge is like anything else, other sports, investing, cooking, whatever. To do well, one needs education if you're going to perform well. I see so many players who have been playing for more years than they want to admit, playing poorly, complaining about it, and yet doing nothing to improve. If they played golf or tennis as badly, they would be taking three lessons a week. Instead, what do they do? They complain about the card fees, the lunches, the seating, not getting a north-south, everything except trying to improve. Sure, after playing for 100 years, one becomes a reasonable card player. But at a higher level, bridge is 95% about the bidding, not the card play. Card play hasn't changed since the days of Gorn. Why? Because there's a right way to play each card combination. But new bidding systems have completely revolutionized the modern game. And these good bidding systems work. They're not difficult, they're just different. So why are you so afraid to lose your mindset? Why aren't you keeping up with the modern game, but instead playing your antiquated system or no system, or worse of all, trying to reinvent the wheel with something that you, the bridge genius, thought up. After all, when something works, why aren't you following along? So when I ask this question, I'm often told, oh, that's just for the pros. Right, like only Tiger uses a driver on the tee, a putter on the green, etc. You should be using the same tools even if you can't use them as well as the so-called pros. So years ago, I asked the late Bernie Chazen why he thought people lose at bridge, and he added to the above discussion that players just don't understand what their own bids really mean, that they hadn't discussed them in enough depth to understand the details of their own conventions, the uncertainty, is it forcing or not? Should I? You should. You should have done this, etc., etc. However, the problem with the average partnership trying to discuss their convention card understandings is that they really don't know what questions to ask each other, what to discuss, like competitive agreements, etc. The late expert Alan Koken had a quiz called 50 Things to Think About. This was a, a series of 50 auctions and you had to decide what you thought each last bid meant. So each partner took the quiz separately and then compared. There were no right answers. You just had to come up with the same as your partner to be sure you understood that you were on the same wavelength as your partner. And he even gave you three multiple choices to make it easier. And yet, I never saw any pair agree on more than half. So what's the bottom line? Everybody needs more education. This month's topic is the takeout double, a necessary, often misunderstood convention. In the early days, the meaning of one anything double was that an opponent could not make what he bid. It soon became apparent that it was not very effective. Then the meaning was the doubler had a hand as good as the opener. 
But by the early 30s, the Todd bid evolved to our present day use, becoming the oldest convention still in use today and one that is used more often than any other. Yet, it's one of the most misunderstood conventions. We were all taught that the perfect shape of 4441, a singleton in the opponent's opening suit, four ha spades, one heart, four diamonds, and four clubs. Now everybody knows that as the advertisement goes. But what variations are permitted in the doubler's shape? This is what causes the most trouble. Anyone can say double when they have the right hands. More difficult is knowing when to double when you have a good hand with non-classic shape. In general, as you depart from perfect shape, you need more high card points to compensate. For example, this auction of one heart and holding this hand, what would you do? How can you pass this hand? If you were taught that a Todd bid by South must include at least four spades because the opening bid was one heart, you've been misled. Let's consider the shape requirements for a takeout double. The Todd bid is an overcall in three suits. It promises at least three cards in the unbid suits. Certainly, any on-bid major. Clearly then, we can make a takeout double with only three cards in an on-bid major. So after a one-heart opening, this hand is not the perfect shape, but certainly not a pass. In a utopian world, you will be dealt four cards in the other major, but it's necessary to bid with many slightly off-shape hands in order not to be stolen blind. As your perfect Todd shape deteriorates from 4441, however, you need more high card points to compensate. You can double one heart with this hand. It has a perfect shape for a Todd, but with the second hand, you have the same high card points but not enough to make a Todd having lost the shape. You need another king here. Also consider the difference between the suits if you make a Todd of one club, one diamond, or even one heart. Partner will usually be able to bid at the one level. But after a Todd of one spade, partner has to bid at the two level. So the same hand after one spade opening which had 4144 shape and you doubled one heart, if you reverse the mages, 1444, this hand I would not make a takeout double because I need a few more high card points. Another auction begins with your right hand opponent opening a minor, such as one diamond. Say a takeout double over a minor, some say, promises one four-card major or even two four-card majors. Now, why should this be? Remember the definition of a takeout double, at least three cards in the unbid suits. South could have the following hand after one diamond opening on his right. Three, 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 four. Not only does this hand not have four cards in the unbid majors, it also has three cards in the opening suit. Many would not double with this hand because of these two so-called defects. No four card major and too many diamonds. Remember, our definition of a Todd does not talk about the number of cards in the opponent's suit. It simply insists on three card support for the unbid suits. So how can you pass that particular hand? Let's go one step further. After a one diamond opening with this hand, this shape is worse than the previous hand because it now has four cards in the opener's suit. However, 
You compensate with 15 useful points, all working in the unbid suits, not wasted, giving the hand good potential. And the hand has at least three card support for the unbid suits. Let's compare that to this hand. After a one diamond opening, I, I would not make a takeout double with this hand. Notice it has only three working honors, the king, an ace, and a king. Your diamond queen is wasted and your shape is bad. When you double with shapes like this, you must have extra to compensate. Passing is often wise and the best call when there's a doubt in a takeout double or an overcall. But remember, the bidding is not over. You may have another chance to bid, but if it turns out to be their hand, you'll be glad you kept quiet and didn't tell the clearer where the missing high cards were located. The flip side is also valid. Do not play bridge in the fear that partner will always have a bad hand and that the opponents will defend perfectly. Winning bridge requires some optimism, and the Todd bid is one of the best places to exercise it. Next time we'll talk about Todd bids with a five-card minor, or even with a five-card major. The use of that elusive responsive double is also possible. Until then, may your Todds be frequent and successful. Okay, I'd like to thank Michael for his presentation today. I hope you found it helpful. What did you think, Vicki? Those were some great pointers Michael had. Can't wait to hear him next month. Yes, Michael will be coming back again next month for another presentation, so be sure to tune in. See you next month.